Tales of Heroes number 31, Nystrom vs. Heroic Company, the rematch on Angville. Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Bridger here with another great video replay review from Tales of Heroes here for you. You can find our website at tales.tsncentral.com. T A L E S O F. No, wait. T A L. Wow, I screwed it up. Awesome. T A L E S dot T S N Central dot com. So, we have a great show for you today. This is the rematch between. Nystrom and Heroic Company on Angaville, and this is actually the game that we had last time. Heroic Company was on the al uh, on the Axis side, Nystrom was on the Allied side, and this was the V1 game, wasn't it, Vinsby? No, it wasn't the no? V1 game. No? Which one was the V1 game? It was the one game? where Heroic had a distinguished uh, VP advantage, and he kept on suiciding Tier 3 into the left side AT gun wall that Nystrom had. Ah, uh, yes. Eventually then he, base he just rushed lost it, didn't he? Didn't he with try the to... Tigers, yeah, and that then he lost that, and Nystrom made a comeback and ended up All right. uh, winning the last match. So My bad on uh, that. I don't know who's going to win this one. Uh, it's a pretty hard-fought and long game. Not our longest that we've had on the show, but uh, nevertheless, it, uh, I've heard it's a very good game, so... Um, let's get it started. I mean, reverse Angaville is very hard for Axis to start out in the north. It's a lot harder, in my opinion, than playing in the south, and it took me quite a while to get used to it, and uh, I know a lot of other people struggle with it uh, to this day. Um, yeah, this is the first time we featured the new changes to Angaville, yeah. which we mentioned in the audio discussion show. There's the wood fence in the south and the southern base. Didn't used to be there, so you used to be able to walk right right through this gap here and get into the enemy base. Right. Some people, had, and we talked about this again in the audio show, which was all about patch 1.6, which you guys can go ahead and check out, um, that it's a wooden fence, which means it's more susceptible to grenades and flamer engineers, or, or pioneers in this case, uh, would be able to basically burn that down and walk right in, uh, whereas if you look in the north, it's all chain link fences, which uh, apparently there's a difference between that. Also in the north, uh, me and Bridger were just talking about this before the show, they added um, those kind of little cartons or crates, not sure what you want to call it, and uh, that, I'm assuming, though I haven't tested it, means that you can no longer wire off that uh, point on the um, upper left-hand side between the stone wall and the chain leak fence. Um, the issue with that was is if you didn't have line of sight, which was not provided by the bunker, you had to have a unit around there. Um, it was very easy um, for Axis to wire that point off with um, either Pioneers or Volks, and they changed that, as well as on the right side you have the building, which was moved down just a little bit. It now covers the VP. Um, before it didn't do that, and it was very easy for Axis to um, tr or yeah, for Axis mainly because Allied MG has a shorter range to completely lock the Allied player in the north into their base just by putting one or two MGs and one in MG in that building and one MG in the other building. Now this changes that dynamic around, and uh, I'm assuming these changes make it uh, better for both sides. Of yeah, the map. you can see the building used to be right up about here, and that would prevent any players, any any units from sneaking out of the Allied base or in the Northern base in general, um, if there was a, a, a unit in the building that used to be here. But the building was moved down here, which, as you said, helps it counter the VP, which is going to be an interesting change. We're going to have to see where that goes in the future. And it also allows players to still get into the right side of the map from the north, even if there's somebody in this building. Now, the building's still in a very good strategic place to lock down a big chunk of the access there, so it's going to be a lot harder to get over there if you do that. But we're at the five-second mark here, Nystrom versus Heroic Company, so let us get it started. Nystrom on the south, Heroic on the north. Let's get started. Five, four, three, two, one. Unpause at the five-second mark. Let's find out where these guys get to. Barracks opening in the south here for Nystrom. Are you on his Nystrom's perspective? Yeah, I'm on Nystrom's. 
right, I don't think it uh, really matters because we got to remove Fog of War. But do you want to well, Let's pause it at it? 20 seconds. Yeah, pause it at 20. All right. <laughs> and switch it. Let me switch. Uh, yeah, it's uh, your job. I always start in the default side. <laughs> All righty. I'm ready. You're at 20 seconds? I'm at 21. So unpause 20. and then tell me. All right. I'm ready. 21. All right. Unpausing five, in four. five, four, three, two, one. Unpause at 21 seconds. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. We got a little bit better because that allows Vittensby to see the the in the the manpower and the munitions and fuel incomes uh, and stuff, and as lo- as well as their stash. So he can give us tips about that. So we've got a barracks and rifleman coming out first. We've also got a two engineer start here so far. Looks like a two pioneer start. Did they fast build the Wehrmacht there? He he did fast build the Wehrmacht, and we have a bike opening from Heroic, uh, the return of the bike in 1.6. Uh, it looks like Nystrom's going for a quick fuel cap on the right, which is pretty popular. Uh, I've been experimenting a little bit as Axis in the north, going for that strap point that Heroic's capping, and then straight to the plus 10 munitions. Uh, additionally, I send the other Pioneer to capture the plus 16 on the left, go Volks first, cap the strap point. So immediately I have a plus 26 income. Uh, this is uh, interesting that Nystrom is doing a more of a 1.5 or pre-1.6 start, which uh, is to wire off that area. Um, it seems that wire does still have some uses if one of the best ally player in the game is using it uh, in the new patch. Yeah, I think in that case, putting the wire there allows you to put something in that building, you know, even if it's just a rifle squad, and it'll do extra damage to anything that's coming up to cut the wire, which is one of the other changes that we saw is units cutting wire take extra damage. So, the bike is uh, definitely surviving a lot better f- facing those engineers, and now the, uh, of course, riflemen are still going to force a bike to retreat, or it's going to take heavy damage. Right. That's definitely uh, it, that bike would have been fried already if uh, if it was 1.5. So I'm glad to see that the the bike does not take as much damage as it did before. But as you noticed, uh, its damage is still pretty pitiful. Its output, so it's more comparable to the Jeep now as far as output damage. The the bike used to always be weaker but stronger offensively, and I felt the Jeep was weaker offensively, stronger defensively, but now it seems like they're more uh, comparable of a unit. Well, the interesting uh, thing the interesting thing about bike and jeep micromanagement in the early game is yeah, the damage is pitiful at the longest range, but engineers and pioneers both have a very short range in general, so if you stay at the longest range as a bike, you're not going to do too much damage, but the engineers and the pioneers can't fire back. That's the difference. Wow! Some critical hits onto those two pioneers that ran in there. It was just like pum pum! They're both dead. Oh man, that was yeah, bad luck. You yeah, didn't even have a chance a, to retreat. That's a situation where people talk about headshots, but <laughs> they were down to about a tenth health, so yeah. they pretty much instantly got killed. Uh, Heroic's doing what he does best. Uh, his bike micro is some of the best in the world. And uh, wow, yeah, it's definitely does not take uh, as much damage as it as it does in the past. That bike would, would have been almost instantly killed in the past. Uh, Nystrom's <laughs> nice and says, shit, I had that bike. Oh, man. Mm, I don't know about that. Guess I not. Think it w- I think if it would have got a damaged engine, he definitely would have got it, but uh, that didn't happen. Yeah. Heroic's doing uh, all-out focus on the right side. He's certainly... Uh, um, the bike, I th- don't think the harassment was quite as good as he would have wanted it to be, but uh, and also losing a Pioneer squad early on, is uh, he's certainly down right now. Um, This is interesting, his position of that machine gun. Very nice uh, users of that. Yeah, and they're suppressed now. Um, I don't see a lot of people put uh, machine guns in that particular building, but uh, you can see it's it's very It's shooting out the top little thing there? Wow! I mean, (laughs) the, the problem with that is, of course, that building provides almost no cover, but it's done a good job of allowing it to shoot in multiple directions. (laughs) <laughs> Did you see that bike? Look at the bike. Look at its health. I can't see, see it. it. There it is. Yes, now I can. Oh! oh drives God. right in front. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. There it goes. I had to say it. That I guess it couldn't hilarious. squeeze right through that little thing. Yeah, right that, that was... Uh, <laughs> Nystrom's wire definitely paid off in that particular case because he couldn't just uh, get it out of there. Yeah. But... Uh, 
yeah, that was, uh, this is kind of, I think, uh, he's struggling a little bit right now, Heroic, uh, certainly, with, as far as map control, um, it looks like he's doing pretty good, but, uh, Nystrom did have a slight early advantage, and losing that bike and losing the Pioneers, um, that's gonna, that's gonna be hard. And it looks like we have an observation post going out. Nystrom realizes he has the advantage and can afford to build an OP. Um, so Heroic better <clears throat> better get a flamer over there ASAP. Or at the very least, all he has to do is cut it off. It's I mean, pretty yeah. hard to, to keep that un, unconnected uh, for the most part. It is difficult, but I mean, with the, with the advantage he just gleamed from forcing those riflemen to retreat again, that that's very good machine gun micro. He's managed to keep the machine gun uh, alive against two rifle squads that he forced to retreat each individually. Oh man, if he loses that pioneer on the right, he's trying to lure him in. Oh uh, no! Oh no! Couldn't yeah, quite do it. It was machine gun in that it. building. I assume I can't see it, but I assume yeah, it was in there. there is. Yeah. Oh well. I'm not sure if Nystrom's... Nystrom, when I see him play, I don't really consider him uh, a motor pool user as much as I see him play. I, I really think he chooses Tank Depot a lot. Um, not because he's still in the old mindset, but I just think uh, he prefers to, to go straight to Sherman's. Um, but I'm not sure if that's what he's going to do this game. Notice no VPs have been capped. Yeah, that's interesting. Not, not incredibly unusual, but uh, I've made it uh, more of an effort to at least try to cap one VP because um, it can put the pressure on on your opponent um, yeah. early on. And if he didn't cap the VP by now, he would have been down by 50 or 75 VP. So it can make a big difference in the long run. Uh, let's see if Nystrom gets grenades. I don't see him usually getting grenades either. Oh, wow. Oh, no. That squad got really... This is not good so far. Holy but he's crap. almost got that machine gun. And he's killed it. But the problem is, what has that done for him? He lost his squad in return. Ouch. That's bad news. That was a big, big loss right there for Nystrom. Um, yep. The thing is, he was going after that MG hardcore. But all he's done is force his opponent to pay... What What would it be on the Axis side? 3 times 28 to, to reinforce that you know, to have some Volks take over that MG. So, he, you know, Hero Company hasn't, in effect, lost that MG completely, but he completely lost that li rifle squad. He can't reinforce that rifle squad for 22 each. You know, he's going to have to pay for a whole brand new one. Right. Uh, definitely that charge would have been much better if it was supported by grenades. We already have uh, Stormtroopers out on the field. Wow, really? Uh, that's so, uh, we do have Blitz. Uh, he lost a lot chosen. of stuff, though. He did lose. I mean, Nystrom's OP and then... Building the supply yard means he's definitely a, a squad down supply at this point. Uh, the 300 manpower put into that is uh, could be costly. Yeah, he's he's really going to want to reconnect that uh, the strat point to the fuel right now. Either one of those strat points that's connected to the fuel. That's his that's his big thing right now because he doesn't have another 200 that he can afford to get on that plus 16 on the right. And if he's going. Uh, supply yard. That means he's not going to be getting the upgrades, likely at the uh, at the barracks. He's got 114 fuel with engineers just sitting there. I think you're right. I think he's going tank depot. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But, he might be going uh, motor pool. He's very low on uh, manpower, and I think that's because he's got so many rifle squads on the field. Even if they're not fully reinforced. Oh no, this one is fully reinforced. It's less than half health. Yeah. Ouch! Triage center could help in this situation. Because that this squad is, is almost worthless. This is going to make me throw up, because you see that stupid MG deployment bug on the left side right there? Where, on uh, the bottom left? The stupid thing, I guarantee you he's going to try to replace it, and oh my god, it actually worked. I can't believe that, but you know what? He already what for a second he it deployed, but then it undeployed and redeployed. No, no, it deploys, but when it deploys, it deploys in like a forty-five degrees from where you actually want it to oh, deploy. Oh, that's weird. Like it was facing off, off the map. So uh, just watch it. I'm, that's what happens when MG42s are recruited. It's a bad bug. It doesn't happen every single time that you when you do it, but most of the time you uh, have it happen to you. Are we in tier 2 yet? It looks like he's upgrading right now at the headquarters. Yeah, he's, 
he's he's definitely in tier two. He's going to tier three. Ah, okay. So, I mean, this is a very interesting strategy by the Axis, though. He's massing Volks. It looks like a lot of the time. I mean, he's his Volks have beat those riflemen almost every time because they've had machine gun support. Right, you need to have more Volks on this map than MGs because, um, as you saw, it was very easy for Nystrom to get a basically a two-sided cap on the map. So um, it's interesting Heroic didn't deploy that MG again. I, I don't know if he's waiting for the rifleman, then it'll auto-deploy in that particular direction or, or whatnot. But uh, we'll see. Which MG are you talking about? The one yeah, on the left? Yeah, see, look at look, that MG on the left. Do you honestly think he wanted to deploy that stupid MG in that direction? Give me a break. It's a dumb, dumb bug. And he's uh, redeploying it. Wow, I haven't seen that. Is that just a 1.6 bug? That's been there forever. I haven't I don't seen know, that but, happen a lot, but I don't. maybe but, yeah. I don't recruit enough Axis MGs. Yeah, and we have uh, BARs, so yeah. I'm pretty sure Nystrom's going to forgo the tank depot for a while. He really feels he needs to uh, get that fuel linked up, and he's making an all-out push for the left-hand side. Um, Heroic's being... A little bit less aggressive than maybe he should be on on the right side. He does have a squad of cloak storms, but you don't really want that walking into. Uh, let me see where that up uh, MG deployed. You know the opposite direction again. It did really right there. Yeah, I didn't even uh, see it because I wasn't close enough. Wow. I was playing in my tournament match last week, and it pretty much. Uh, I'm not gonna say it cost me the game, but it certainly didn't help. <laughs> allowing you know allowing someone to get a free flank on you like that. What was that, three times in a row it didn't deploy right? It's annoying, man. This, that, that is the number one priority as far as I'm concerned with bugs right now after this hot fix patch. It needs to be fixed. Yeah, that, that's definitely... I mean, it's... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bundled made. Oh, he just barely escapes with two guys. Two one guys. guy. And he made it past the wall. Wow. Look at that sliver of nothingness of health. Can't even see it. It would have been good to upgrade a flamer and fry that uh, OP on the left. What's uh, Nystrom's fuel at right now? Nystrom's he's building at a tank 40 depot. fuel. He's because, at 40? Yep, he's building the tank mm -hmm. depot. So he's once that tank depot is done, he's going to be pretty close to getting a Sherman. He's already pretty close to getting a, an M10 if he wants it, but I don't see any need for an M10 at this point. 415 no. to 500, Nystrom's already down by about 100 VPs. Uh, no... Yeah, 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 right. Is um, it reverse on yours, or is it it's, fixed? It's screwed up. Oh, right. it is. They never fixed that. Oh, that's unfortunate. I doubt we'll see statistics either when we're done. No, yeah, and that's another thing that's really sad that the replay system doesn't have anymore. We can only hope for a fix in the future. All right, so... We've got bars and, uh-oh, we've got stormtroopers with Panzer Shrek. See, this is one of those situations where... You can freak them out if you keep going, you know, rifleman upgrades at this point. Instead of going tank depot. Um, because that Panzer Shrek would be pretty pretty much useless against a lot of uh, against a lot of infantry. But a right. tank comes out, then it's gonna actually be worth upgrading. Uh oh, can he can he flame it fast enough? Is he gonna be able to kill that Panzer Shrek? He got it! Uh wow! Oh no, never mind, there's the last guy over there. Uh it just barely got out of there. But this is the Angerville issue with the Axis. Um, it's really, really hard for them to hold both sides at, at once, and uh, with, especially with rifle spam. Here, here we go. Now let's see if the uh, riflemen have the same bug with uh, deploying that MG. <laughs> I never notice that when I have riflemen. It might only be the Axis when they do that. It could be. No, he seems to be That's, setting that up in the right direction. Seems to be okay. But his gun I've, is sitting on top of it. Sides, That's interesting. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a Puma come out, and uh, probably when Nystrom sees that, he'll... He's a Sherman guy, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure he's built M10s, but most of the time when I watch him, he he likes to, to build build Shermans. They're just much more durable, and there was this one particular game against uh, EXE, EXE, that guy, uh, he uh, had one Sherman and it pretty much survived the entire game. Went down to like 10% health, maybe seven or eight times. It was the some of the best micro that I think anyone had ever seen. I think it was a silver got silver replay on game replays. Uh, it was a pretty good watch. It's too bad it was in 1.5, but uh, it's been great. That was a great game. Uh, 
So we have Puma and then a Stug, pretty typical. Sherman's uh, popping opening. out right now. Just started uh, being Sherman. built. I'm sure he'll probably. If how much munitions does he have? Seventy. Seventy. He hasn't had I, a lot of munitions connected. He's he's not got yeah. those uh, plus tens a whole lot. Uh oh. Well, we see grenades here. I don't think he's got grenades, but. No. This would be a perfect place. Look at two storm squads down. Instead, we've got a bundle. Oh, even though he moved him. Ouch. Bundle is deadly. Yep. If he had moved him just a half a second earlier, you know, as soon as that throw started, he might have been okay. But yeah. I'm really happy he's finally roasting that observation post. It's quite unfortunate he didn't get rid of that earlier. Um, had he got rid of that. Um, Oh, man, there's a lot of action going on right Sticky's now. Sticky's upgrading right now. Yeah, see, I made this kind of same mistake. I think it's pretty common. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to run into the Axis base. and uh, But most of the time when you bust out with Tier 3 now, they, they have some kind of counter for it. So he just basically allowed, if that was an M10, that uh, Puma would have been pretty much toast. Could have just ran right after it. Um, so it's risky doing that. Uh, you want to get those extra kills in when the riflemen retreat, but uh, he's I, it I backwards. think it might not be worth it. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, but I think it was good, though, because he went in and as soon as he saw that the barracks was upgrading, you know, the light blinking, he's like, oh crap, I gotta get out of there. Stickies are coming soon. Yeah. That's an important VP cap uh, for her own company, because now he'll. <laughs> well, you can see what this score really is. I guess I'm supposed to reverse this. Yes. 358 yeah. for Nystrom. Okay. 492. Yeah, so, for... he, so he's going to have the VP advantage. If he can get that down to, say, you know, 250 before um, it really starts to turn around, um, he, can, he can have a significant VP advantage and put a lot of pressure on Nystrom. Um, has he chosen a Doctrine yet? No, he's at four VPs. He hasn't chosen a Doctrine yet. Four CPs. Four mm -hmm. CPs, sorry. Wow, he knows the tank is up there, so he decided to do a little bit of a base rush here. Yeah, this is dangerous. I don't know why he's moving the stug closer. What is he? What is he planning on doing here? It's harder for it to get uh, flanked, in a sense, by the by the Sherman. Oh yeah. She knows. yeah. Now the Sherman, of course, is outmatched by a stug from the front because of that. Because exactly because of that ping off the front. But he's going to try and get that barracks. He's at the right position. He's probably got his storms over there, too. I can't see it, but let me got see. Got another stug coming out. You know, it would be great to upgun on the Puma. He's got 260 munitions and easy. I mean, that's just easy right there. And the Puma the upgun does a little bit of damage to uh, the rear of oh, tanks, yeah. doesn't it? With rear shots, it's actually quite effective. Um, at least when you combine it with something else. I mean, it's not going to take out a Sherman by itself. Yeah. You can do a decent, decent damage against an M10. But uh, just in general, this is this is kind of kind of risky. Um, Seems like it's paying off though. He can't get that Sherman around because there's storms right there. He's got another stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow, heroics got this one locked in right now. I would have liked to see a stug come in right now. I mean, you saw that that stug shot the. Uh, that's at least eight or nine shots yeah. right there. So I mean, you compare that to the stu. Um, there's definitely a big difference in damage. Oh man. Nice. Got rid of the barracks. Yeah. Sherman's getting the hell out of there. There's now a, another Stug that's got full health. Yep. Losing that Sherman is. It's gonna be really, really bad. Yeah, but he's got stickies already, so here it comes. They're coming a little bit close. First sticky, second sticky, one on each Stug now. He's got to get those engineers repairing the Sherman, though. Destroyed engine on both of them? Yeah. Wow, destroyed oh, engine. God. Ooh, that's bad. Yeah. Here comes uh, ATs to pretty much own everything. Ooh, he's airborne. I see. That's yeah. what he needed. Oh, Jesus. He's got everything inside that base right now. If he loses both those stugs, I just don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, ping! <laughs> but that's not going to help against a destroyed engine. That stug's not going anywhere. Oh, the stug might get one shot on that Sherman. Nope, main gun destroyed. Uh, Never mind. Yeah, Nystrom's really, really good for keeping the, those Shermans alive. If he would have lost that Sherman, 
I think they both would have been back to square one, but keeping that around is definitely going to give them a, a tank advantage. GG 5% bug. There it goes. <laughs> and now uh, Bard Rifleman chewing the hell out of some non-upgraded Volks in the north. We got storms coming in. Uh, retreat. Well, we're, we are going to have a Tiger um, in half a command point, but... Uh, it's pretty interesting, though, why he, he took so long before he decided to drop a, a AT. an AT. I mean, he had the points. I wonder if he was still deciding whether he should go airborne at that point. I mean, that was the only thing that saved him. If he hadn't been able to drop that AT, he would have been in huge trouble. Yeah. I don't think Armor Company would have helped him. I don't think anything would have helped him. He didn't have the munitions for Armor Company uh, to yeah. help. Yep. We have a Stormtrooper squad sneaking up on the right-hand side. That's, he's got... Good God, 400 munitions. Very nice income, plus 70. So a well-placed bundled nade. Um, I could see this. Here it goes, yeah. here it goes, here it goes. Yeah, they revealed well themselves. Ouch. That was well-placed. <laughs> he got it reduced, though, and that's what he decided to stick around for. That's what matters. That was risky, but he managed to do it. Yeah, keeping these Shermans alive is just, my God. I mean, if you take the Fog of War off, I'm not sure if you have it on, but without that Sherman... Um, he would have been in a much bigger hurt than he is in now. And, oh, yeah. Uh, that, that, if Nystrom wins this, certainly that's going to be instrumental in, in the victory. He's lost his barracks. Um, when you lose your barracks, it's pretty harsh to devote 200 manpower to that, um, especially what you could be trading it off for. Um, he doesn't have grenades, though. That's the problem. He's not able to upgrade the grenades now. And he's he's got to not lose any of these rifle squads because he can't build anymore. Yep. Um, Hero Company has the uh, enough command points for a tiger, and uh, he's at 400 manpower. So we'd have to wait at least another two minutes for that to come onto the field. Is that a second Sherman? No. Uh, no, he's not so building anything yet. He's Sherman. he's about 375, so he's a little bit. He's pretty close to getting a new Sherman. Yep. He's consolidating everything in his base right now, and he's just like, okay, I've got some time with the VPs. Actually, no, he doesn't have time with the VPs because of that early VP loss. Uh, he's at 298 to 446, the Axis player has. And he's oh, going to start is... losing it again. Uh-oh. Yeah, sticky. He's... Nice! <laughs> the curveball oh, sticky. Did... He didn't have his... Uh... His storms on hold fire, so they started shooting when they were moving. Uh, this is horrible. Oh, don't! He was gonna try and sneak him around the side, huh? Yeah. Oh, he didn't even need to sneak him around the side. They destroyed that bunker last. Uh, not bunker, the uh, yeah, it's the MG nest. Yeah, I think he wanted to move in and get a nice bundle made. That would have been very bad. Storms coming up uh, in the upper right. Ooh, but he got the puma. Got it. Yep. That was nice maneuvering. Once they got the sticky in there, he knew the Sherman could chase it. Ah, oh, this tug is just gone. Bundle nade. No! Bundle nade. He's too close. Uh, <laughs> He's setting up to shoot directly at the tank when it comes out. There it goes. Oh my god. I really think he needed to wait for that tiger. Yeah. Right. Oh well. I don't know. I mean, this is another situation. Why do you need to attack this base when you've got, you know, control over the left and the right northern section here? He actually called in a, ma a, 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 a an airdrop, a supply drop. Interestingly, yep. I think he was going straight for the munitions because he he needed it for uh, uh, for suppression fire and all the other and sticky bombs and such. Plus now he's got enough fuel for a a, a croc if he wants one, a croc and an, and a, a Sherman. He could just well, start pumping been out the armor. It would, I think also he wanted the weapons. Putting an MG inside of his HQ and then a mortar back can really halt any kind of base rush. Base base. He had an MG coming. though, not lost by uh, by heroic company. So this is a close one, 268. Now he's still losing VPs. He's pretty low. 250 VPs can drop relatively quickly. That was 
unfortunate micro. He, instead of driving straight, he, he got a side hit in there. Uh, he's going to need to the engineers to repair that. I wonder if he's going to choose to get a tiger, or what his, or if he's going to just continue with tier three at this point. He's got enough manpower. Um, very curious to see what he does. One of the interesting things about taking stormtroopers out of the mix is that tigers now cost um, take up 14 pop population, and studs are only four. Um, stormtroopers are eight, so they were when you're taking into consideration a stu, um, its population cap is is its population usage is pretty low. Um, we got in a long discussion about the usefulness of the stu, but uh, with that four pop cap, um, it it doesn't really take up that much. So uh, that might be something it has going for it. Yeah. But what do we have here? We have two Shermans versus one Tiger. AT gun's on the wrong side of the field to help out right now. He has yeah. enough. He's dropping an AT, though. Probably in the right position, too. And it's, he it's is. hard to flank that. From the heavens. He's now got basically no manpower, though. And he's, he's taking the left, though. I didn't even see that. He snuck a, a rifle squad over there. How many rifle squads does he have left on the map? He still has the three that he had when he lost the barracks, so he's been good about microing keeping those alive, too. How much uh, health does that uh, tiger have? I can't see. Uh, I can see it's now. lost about an eighth of health. Yeah. Now, he uh, really he should have a pioneer over there ready to repair it. Right. And he's trying to sneak in the storms and all this stuff. If he can bundle Nade, get rid of that, and then... Uh, Focus. For, oh, the storms are at such low health, though. Yeah, he really There's could use Nystrom some doing what he does best, which is microing those Shermans right out of there when they get down to nil health. And that was a pretty harsh strafing run, it looked like there. Was oh, but there goes one. I didn't see a strafing run. Yeah, there was a strafing run. Sure. Yeah. All right. I saw it come through and, and hit some of the bolts there. That's how they lost most of their guys. Tigers nice. got low. Uh oh. Is it going to be able to get out of range? It's slowly backing off. No, the next shot comes in. It's still going to survive, but it's not going to be able to survive another sticky. Here comes the sticky. Oh! Nice shot, but it's not going to be able to... No way it can shoot again. No, not enough. But is it a 5% bug? Fug. Yes, it's the yes, fog. Yes, it is. <laughs> GG. Now he actually has... Uh, you you know, love COH I can't believe he's like not this. even going after it. He doesn't have anything to go after it with. I guess that Sherman's really low. He's bringing the AT up. That's where. But uh, he should have just kept backing it up. Nothing to do it now. <laughs> oh, it sees it. Tiger's turning. <laughs> Firing. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, I thought we'd see a, maybe a one-shot to save the tiger. That was like the indestructible <laughs> tiger. But... Uh, <laughs> now he's in trouble. How much manpower we got there? Is he able to pull another one in? He's probably going to do a double tiger manpower blitz, is my guess. Oh, wow, really? He's got enough munitions for that? He's got 400 munitions, so technically he could just manpower blitz man after manpower blitz. Well, there's uh, a pretty long cooldown on manpower blitz, isn't there? Well, yeah, it's, I believe, what, three minutes Three minutes. Yeah. Volks are really hard-pressed to charge barred riflemen. It's just, it's not a very good idea, usually. Unless right. the unless the riflemen are wounded and the Volks are at full health, they're usually going to lose if they charge riflemen that are in cover. I wonder if he's going to call in the Tiger and then get another one with manpower blitz. Think about, I mean, this game is really playing out a lot different than um, 1.5 would have played out, because notice... There's no supply drop spam going in yeah. inside of uh, his base. There's no storm and tiger spam going on. Mm. You really have a different game right now between Airborne and, and Blitz. Yeah. And he did use Manpower Blitz, I think a little bit prematurely, um, just for the simple fact that he could have racked in another 30 seconds worth of Manpower before doing that. You can't uh, just call in two instant tires. You have to wait for the 30-second... Uh, oh, no. That. Lost two Panzer Shreks there. That... Oh, and there they go again! 
<laughs> All the Panzer Shreks are still on the ground. Uh, we got Bombing Run available now. The Allied player's got... Uh, Nystrom here's got everything. Oh, but a nice shot with that. He's just got to avoid getting any stickies in that Tiger to keep it alive. That was what killed him last time, is the Tiger can't back up fast enough to avoid stickies, really. He's got to have some, uh, some MP44... Uh, storms or a machine gun or something backing that up to prevent the stickies from getting close enough in and uh, he's gonna get all those panzer tracks back that was close and the other and the enemy lost a uh, a bar in there too yeah I feel bad for heroic right now he used the uh, manpower blitz and pretty much for no real reason he didn't call in another tiger and he just called in a storm squad instead so yeah that wasn't the best use of a manpower blitz but that's what you get in 1.6, 1. 1. Uh, you have to make a choice. Now you don't get Tigers and Storms for the, for the cost. Base improvements so. completed. But, uh, Still, the, uh, the lead in level. terms of VPs is, is in uh, Heroic Company's side. Yep. Level 1 veterancy is really you know, the only thing I can say about How much about fuel does it. he have over there? Uh, 400, 350. So he's got plenty for a Compcraft Center, but probably not enough manpower right now. Yeah, Comcraft Center is just needs to be played in every game. I watch German Supreme play, and he'll get level one vet on his infantry pretty early on, and then uh, you know late game. Just having it around to you know upgrade, it's really easy to forget about it. But you know why let the allies get all the all the veterancy? Um, Nystrom doing pro repair jobs as always. Yeah, and that one AT gun. No, he's got two AT guns. Okay, that's right. He dropped a second one. But those two AT guns have to be neutralized if he brings in his Tiger. Once he neutralizes those AT... Oh, upgun Shermans too, though. Upgun Shermans, sticky bombs. Even if he takes out the AT guns, he's going to have a hard time against all that with just one Tiger. Two Tigers and taking out those AT guns, then he's going to win. He's He's got to do a really good job of microing those storms around the outside. Oh no, we revealed him a little too early, I think. A bundled nade would have been... Oh no, the Sherman probably drove cl too close. There goes the bundled nade, but he saw it and it's moved. Ugh. Busted on that side. Here come the storms on the left. Well, it's interesting that, I mean, Nystrom decided, hey, I'm going to move everything to the left. I mean, the two VPs are on the right, so... Hmm. That's interesting. It is interesting, but, uh... Yeah, not sure why Heroic's being overly aggressive like he was in the other game on the, on the left-hand side when the v, all, both of the VPs are on the, the right. Um, hmm. Oh, well. Uh, that Tiger's probably going to be gone here. Yep. Upgun Sherman's going to do a pretty good job of that. But here comes uh, some storms. Are they going to be able to kill that Sherman in time? No 5% bug this time. Triple veterancy Sherman, that's not something you see every day. But as you said, keeping those Shermans alive has been proving very well. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! He's out of range of his AT guns! This Tiger could give him a world of hurt, plus Panzer Shreks. He might just get both Shermans if he chases them. Oh no, a miss! That was a big problem. He could have at least got one of those Shermans. Oh, man, that was bad. Heroic Company literally moments away from killing both Shermans and getting himself right back in this game. I don't think it's an AT wall he can't get around. There's the whole right side that's, you know, unprotected, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has um, used two manpower blitzes to yeah. do that. Really not to the best advantage. Yeah. Uh, his tigers just aren't really doing anything, so it's an ad admirable resignation, but I think uh, it might have been due time. I mean, when you watch Nystrom play, you see level 3 Shermans in almost every game, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. You were mentioning you don't see that every day. Well, you should watch more of Nystrom's replays. I guess I should. <laughs> he's, he's absolutely insane with his Sherman micro, keeping that stuff alive all the time. Um, uh, heroic... Uh, I don't know, yeah. I mean, you really have this one in the bag, I think. Uh, like you said, uh, just you didn't base rush quite as effectively as you probably normally do, so um, that was certainly certainly an issue. And then 
Uh, Nystrom chose Airborne, and we all know how hard it is to base rush against Airborne, not yeah. just for the AT reason, but also the supply drop reason. To have you know instant MGs and mortars on the field during the base rush are pretty crucial. Um, what, what were your thoughts? I think it was a it was a pretty interesting game. Like I said, it wasn't one of our longest uh, before we recorded. Yeah, it wasn't but, a uh, huge OMG who's going to win for a sixty minutes game, which you know. But it's right. it's good to have a different change of pace. I think I don't know. I think the storm use was what killed Heroic Company. I don't think I saw an effective use of stormtroopers the entire game. Uh, there might have been one time on the right where he got a good you know bundled nade in there, but the rest of the time the storms were always revealed early. And you know, chewed up before you had a single chance to do anything with him. Yeah, I. I it might have just been unlucky. You know, he was moving them. You know, one way, and his opponent just happened to walk in that direction and reveal him. Yeah, I agree. Um, and uh, but mainly just you know the base rushes. He couldn't didn't execute him quite as properly. It looked pretty good to begin with, but uh, once that AT gun was dropped in, it just was a world of hurt yeah. um, for him. So um, I think everyone's still kind of getting adjusted to not having storms with Tigers, and certainly um, I, I think all Axis players are, and more so I think um, her company might have had a little bit of a difficult time just adapting. Yeah. Um, I think this was played pretty much the day, or if not the day after 1.6 came out, so... Um, this was all still pretty new. I think maybe you know the, both these guys had played uh, only a couple, a couple games, maybe a dozen or so. So um, it was an interesting game for the most part. Uh, I might have, I, I think I do agree with you. The stormtrooper usage wasn't uh, quite as good as I've seen in some of his other replays, but uh, there were some still, like you said, some still well placed bundled nades, but really some early reveals, especially when he uh, moved down into the base where that first storm squad uh, wasn't on hold fire and it got detected by the rifleman yeah. and throws bundled nade uh, that was that was pretty hard to swallow so um, yep and level 2 vet engineers also at the HQ that's cute <laughs> I saw that I saw those guys at level 2 veterans I was like wow what the heck do engineers get at level 2 veterans let me look this yep. up and also I'm really taking, interested taking down his uh, his observation post when he had the chance, that was that was pretty crucial, as well, because um, it allowed Nystrom to reconnect to that, yeah. and um, and that that really was not good, especially because uh, Nystrom's mainly a Sherman user, which is which requires a lot of fuel um, to do it. But uh, as you can see, he he knows how to keep his Shermans alive, which also gave uh, Heroic quite a bit of trouble. That mm. first Sherman that survived the base rush. Um, had Nystrom lost that, um, it would have been much harder because he didn't have a barracks. So um, the manpower loss would have been pretty stagnant. But uh, it would have been interesting to see how a st uh, would have contributed to that to that base rush, and if he could have tanked down the tank depot because the yeah. tank depot's at about half health. So yeah. yeah. Now, interestingly, if he had just gotten level for three veterancy on those engineers, they would have done 50% more damage. With a flamer, that's like instant death. That would be like 1.4 croc. <laughs> 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 that would be very interesting to see. As it was, he just had increased accuracy, uh, less uh, damage received, less received suppression, and lower cooldown. So I guess that he did get to fire the, 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 the flamethrower more, probably 25% more, it looks like, on the cooldown. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check out those stats, LinearCurve.net has all the stats updated for 1.6 and stuff. But that was definitely an interesting game. Allied player Nystrom did an awesome job, especially with uh, positioning of those AT guns uh, and as well as keeping the Shermans alive, as you said, and getting them upgunned. Also keeping his uh, infantry alive. How many does he still have? One... To he only lost one squad after that barracks attack. He only lost one squad of riflemen. So uh, you know that was definitely fantastically well played. And I guess with that, it is uh, time to move on and move out here on the Team Sports Cast Network. Tales of Heroes number thirty-one. Thank you guys for tuning in. Next week we'll have another exciting episode from one point six. We'll see how that changes things. Hopefully it won't be quite so uh, you know quick we'll try for uh you know a really good one between some great players on 1.6 still feeling things out in this game we'll see how that changes over the next course of the week listen to our interesting 
discussion this week on 1.6 and the audio show. You can find that at tales.tsncentral.com. And uh, with that, we're out. Thank you guys for tuning in. The Team Sportscast Network. This broadcast is copyrighted 2006 by the Team Sportscast Network. Any copying, reproduction, redistribution, modification, rebroadcasting of any kind or any manner is expressly prohibited without the written permission of the Team Sportscast Network, LLC.